a soft landing on Venus had been accomplished. Venus is closer to the sun and it is the opposite with temperatures at blisteringly hot 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Venus, often called Earth's evil twin, boasts a dense and harmful atmosphere packed with carbon dioxide. It's forever covered by thick yellow clouds made of sulfuric acid, which trap heat and create a runaway greenhouse effect. Out of all the planets in our solar family, Venus holds the record for being the hottest, even though Mercury is nearer to the sun. Still, it has always intrigued us. The Venera program marked a series of remarkable space probes crafted by the Soviet Union from 1961 to 1984 to collect unique data and pictures from Venus's harsh surface. But it wasn't easy. Thirteen probes made it into Venus's atmosphere, including the Vega program and Venera Halley probes. Out of these, ten landed safely on the planet's surface. However, the harsh conditions on Venus meant that these probes could only survive briefly, ranging from 23 minutes to two hours. But what did these Soviet probes find? And why do some Venus images still amaze scientists? Let's find out. The initial Soviet endeavor to send a probe on a flyby mission to Venus took place on February 4, 1961, yet it, unfortunately, couldn't break free from Earth's orbit. The Soviets employed a similar approach for exploring other planets, sending dual probes with a second vehicle launched soon after the first. Venera 1 and Venera 2 were intended to bypass Venus without getting trapped. Venera 1 began on February 12, 1961, but sadly, the probe stopped sending signals after a week. Although it got pretty close to Venus, reaching a proximity of 100,000 kilometers, 62,000 miles, before going around the sun. Launched on November 12, 1965, Venera 2 faced communication issues upon departing Earth's orbit. The Venera 3-6 probes were pretty similar. They weighed about as much as a car and were launched into space using a rocket. Each of these probes had two parts, a main part and a round part for entering the air around Venus. These probes were meant to study the air on Venus, but they didn't have anything special to help them land. Sadly, the first probes didn't work for long, so they couldn't send data back to Earth. On March 1, 1966, Venera 3 became the first man-made object to hit another planet's surface, crashing down. Yet, since the data tools of the spacecraft failed on entering the atmosphere, no Venusian atmospheric data were collected. Then, on October 18, 1967, Venera 4 accomplished a groundbreaking feat by measuring another planet's atmosphere. This mission disclosed that Venus's major gas is carbon dioxide. While initially claiming the craft reached the surface intact, later analysis, including data from the American Mariner 5 spacecraft, showed Venus's surface pressure to be 75 to 100 atmospheres, higher than Venera 4's hull strength of 25 atmospheres. Consequently, the claim was retracted. After that, the Soviets sent Venera 5 and Venera 6 to Venus, but they knew the pressure would be too strong for these probes to land safely. Engineered to shed about half their weight before entering the atmosphere, these crafts captured data for 53 and 51 minutes, respectively, during their gradual parachute descent before their batteries gave out. During this period, it became more evident that Venus likely lacked liquid water. Despite this, the design plans for the Soviet Venera probes still considered the chance of a water landing as late as 1964. The Venera 7 probe, launched in August 1970, was the first designed to safely land on Venus. It was built extra tough to endure the harsh conditions. Although it had few experiments and had a glitch that limited its data, scientists managed to figure out Venus's pressure, 90 times Earth's, and temperature, 465 degrees Celsius, or 869 degree Fahrenheit, from the temperature readings. These were the first direct measurements from the surface. The Venera 4-7 probe's Doppler measurements showed fast winds in Venus's atmosphere, super rotation, and gathered info on atmospheric makeup. Unfortunately, Venera 7's parachute had issues right before landing. It hit the ground at 17 meters per second, 56 foot per second, tipped over, but survived. This caused problems with its radio signal, making it weak, yet it sent data, including temperature, for 23 more minutes before its batteries died. So, on December 15, 1970, it became the first human-made probe to send data from Venus's surface. Venera 7 gave us temperature, pressure, and atmospheric data. Launched in 1972, Venera 8 had more advanced tools for studying the surface, including a gamma spectrometer. The main part of Venera 8, like that of Venera 7 and previous missions, followed a design similar to the Zond 3 mission. As it descended, the lander sent data back and landed in sunlight. It checked the brightness, but didn't have a camera. The probe sent data for nearly an hour, 
Venera 8 analyzed the surface for potassium, uranium, and thorium using gamma rays. After the unsuccessful Cosmos 482, a new design was adopted for the 1975 Venera 9 and 10 probes and the 1978 Venera 11 and 12 probes. These spacecrafts were much larger, weighing around 5 tons, and were launched by the powerful Proton Booster. Venera 9 showed us the first pictures of Venus's surface and more gamma ray data. They consisted of a transfer and relay bus equipped with engines to slow down and enter Venus's orbit, Venera 9 and 10, 11 and 12, and to act as a receiver and relay for the entry probe's signals. The entry probe was shielded within a spherical heat shield placed atop the bus. An interesting feature was the design, featuring a spherical compartment to shield electronics from harsh atmospheric conditions. Below this was a shock-absorbing crush ring for landing. Above the pressure sphere, there was a cylindrical antenna structure and an aero brake like wide dish. The primary goal was surface operation for a minimum of 30 minutes. Instruments varied among missions, including cameras and equipment for analyzing the atmosphere and soil. However, all four landers faced issues with their camera lens caps not releasing. Venera 9's lander worked for over 53 minutes, using one of two cameras. The other camera's lens cap remained closed. Venera 10's lander operated for over 65 minutes, capturing images with one camera, while the other camera's lens cap remained shut. Venera 11's lander functioned for over 95 minutes, but neither of its camera's lens caps opened. Venera 12's lander operated for more than 110 minutes, but neither of its camera's lens caps opened. Venera 13 and 14, 1981-82, each had a special craft to descend and land, holding most of the equipment and electronics, while a separate flyby spacecraft helped with communication. Their design resembled the earlier Venera 9 to 12 landers. They carried tools to study the ground and air after landing like cameras, a microphone, a drill, a surface sampler, and a seismometer. They could even measure electric discharges in Venus's atmosphere during their descent. Venera 13 provided color images and X-ray data of the surface. These two crafts landed roughly 950 kilometer, 590 miles apart, just east of an elevated area called Phoebe Regio. Venera 13 survived for 127 minutes, and Venera 14 14 for 57 minutes, much longer than the planned 32 minutes. Radar images from Venera 15 and 16 discovered that Venus's ridges and grooves were due to tectonic changes. Venera 14 faced a small hiccup. Its camera lens cap was misplaced, so it measured the cap's compressibility instead of the surface. As the descent vehicles reached Venus, they sent data to the buses, which acted like relays and passed the information along. In 1983, Venera 15 and 16 were orbiting missions. Like previous probes, they were designed to study Venus, but they had a new tool instead of the usual landing gear. This tool was a radar system for imaging the surface. This radar was important because it could go through Venus's thick clouds. Both missions had the same radar system, Synthetic Aperture Radar, SAR, and a radio altimeter. The SAR worked for eight months and gave detailed pictures of Venus's surface, showing things as small as one to two kilometers. 0.6 to 1.2 miles. The radio altimeter used a kind of antenna 8 centimeters long to send and receive signals from Venus's surface quickly in about 0.67 milliseconds. This radar system gave us a detailed map of how reflective the surface of the northern part of Venus was. The measurements were taken from 91 to 182 kilometers away. The two spacecraft flew around Venus in almost circular paths. They did a good job mapping the top part of the atmosphere in the north. From the North Pole to 30 degrees north, about 115 million square kilometers or 71 million square miles during the main mission. They also used an altimeter to measure heights with an accuracy of about 50 meters, 164 feet. And an instrument from East Germany measured how hot the surface was in different places. All these missions, despite their short lives, significantly improved our knowledge of our neighboring planet. In 2022, NASA's Parker Solar Probe took special images of Venus, showing its night side. This probe's pictures revealed the outlines of continents, plains, plateaus, and even a glowing halo of oxygen in the air. The Parker Solar Probe surpassed expectations, seeing through Venus's clouds to its surface. So, do you think Venus was worth all this effort? Let us know in the comments. With that said, thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more.